Welcome to English 102. This is a flex start online course, which means that it is a condensed version of English 102. We'll complete all of the coursework in 12 weeks, and all of the work will be completed independently by you online. Because it is an online course, it's going to require a great deal of time management and self-discipline on your part. What it essentially boils down to is that we are going to cover three and a half hours of class time per week in addition to the time that you would normally spend on homework for a regular in-person class, except that you'll be doing that work online. If you need any help at any point with your work, please don't hesitate to contact me for help. You can contact me at lindsay.knowles at hgtc.edu, and I'll show you in a few minutes where that email address is written down. We will begin the coursework immediately, so please make sure that you take some time today to look around our course page and become familiar with where all of the content is located. I'm going to take a few minutes just to give you a brief tour of our home page. In this area of the home page, you'll see updates, and you can see that there's one quiz not attempted that is coming up. We also have the calendar tool over here on the right and you can see that week one opens up on September 19th and then there is also something called the attendance verification quiz that is due by September 21st and it says availability ends. I will explain to you what that verification quiz is and why you need to take it in just a little bit. Well, we also have the news tool which I'll use pretty frequently to communicate with you. Since I won't see you in person, I need to be able to communicate with you online. So if I have any reminders, I will post those in the news feed. If I need to make any changes to the course content, I'll also post that in the news feed. So please make sure that you check D2L regularly and that you pay attention to the news posts um, that I will post regularly on this page. On the top right side of the page is a section that's called Tools. If you click on that, you can see that there is attendance at the top followed by grades. I will track attendance weekly, so please make sure that you keep an eye on that and that you check your attendance. And then there's also the grades section. I post grades weekly, so once I grade assignments, you will be able to go into the grade book and see not only the grade that you received, but also any feedback that I gave you on a particular assignment within D2L. Underneath assignments, you'll see discussions, Dropbox, and quizzes, and we'll, we will be using all three of those types of assignments. But the most important section for you to focus on is content. Under content, on the left-hand side, you'll see a section that says Overview. If you open this up, this will take you to a document that goes over everything in English 102 and discusses each assignment in depth. I'm not going to go over this entire document in depth. You'll need to do that independently, but there are a few important aspects of the course that I do need to touch on today. On the top right side of the page, you can see my contact information. My office phone number is 843-349-7893. And on the top right side of the page, um, you will see lindsay.knowles at hgtc.edu. Email is the best way to contact me. Um, if you send me an email, please allow a 24-hour response time on the weekdays and a 48-hour response time on the weekends. I don't usually take that long to get back to you, but I may need that extra time. There is a message function on D2L, but please make sure that you don't email me on D2L as I rarely check that account and I may miss your message when you need a quick response from me. If you would like to meet with me in person, which I certainly welcome you to do, I do have office hours. I'm located on the Conway campus in Building 1000, Office 133, and this semester I have office hours on Mondays and Wednesdays from 10 to 1, and on Tuesdays from 10 to 12. I can also meet with you on a Thursday or a Friday as long as you let me know in advance. We can schedule an appointment. This section of the file, the instructor information sheet, goes over success in the course. Please take some time to read through this section as it discusses what you can do to be successful in English 102, as well as what you need to do to be successful in an online course. The materials are listed here. You will need the textbook. It is called Literature, Reading, Reacting, Writing, 8th Edition, and the editors are Kersner and Mandel. This textbook is available through our campus bookstore. 
You will need a USB storage device, Dropbox.com account, or Google Drive account to save all of your work. You need access to your own work, textbook, and all assigned readings each week. And perhaps the most important aspect of an online class is to have access to a computer, a word processing program, the internet, D2L, and WaveNet. I will also be posting videos, so you will need some way to hear the audio. Uh, so if you have a set of headphones or if you have some speakers, you will need to use those. You also need a Turnitin.com account. This is free to you. I'll distribute the registration instructions via D2L and you actually have an assignment coming up that requires you to create your Turnitin.com account and submit a document in MLA format. But Turnitin.com is used for two um, different things. The first one is that it is a plagiarism detection system and it will show if your content in your paper matches any outside content. And the second function that I use on D2L is grading. So I actually provide all of the feedback on your papers to you through Turnitin. This section of the instructor's information sheet goes over grade percentages. So our course is broken down into these different sections. You have short writings and participation, which is worth 20% of the final grade. Quizzes, which are on the readings, are worth 10%. You have two exams, the first exam and the second exam, which is the final. Each one of those is worth 10%. And then you also have three major essays for this course. Essay 1 is a narrative evaluation essay, and that will be worth 15%. Essay 2 is a research essay. You'll be writing about the cultural context of a poem. It's 20%. And then essay three will be a thematic comparison essay, and that essay will be worth 15% of your grade. As we get to these assignments, I will give you specific instructions, and there's also information further down on this sheet that explains um, how these assignments are graded and what kinds of assignments you will be working on. There's a section on assignments and grades. The most important thing here to communicate with you about is that late work is not accepted. Issues with your computer, printer, or any other form of technology do not excuse late work. I also can't release or discuss grades via email. Uh, a lot of times those conversations need to be more in depth. So what I ask you to do is to either schedule a phone conference with me or an in-person conference with me if you would like to have an in-depth discussion about um, an assignment grade or your grade in the course. Please make sure you read over the information about standard grammar and additional assistance. You have access to two excellent resources. One is BrainFuse, which is an online tutoring resource. You can actually submit your papers to BrainFuse and get feedback on your essays within 24 hours. And of course, we also have our Student Success and Tutoring Center, and we have an SSTC location on each campus, Grand Strand, Georgetown, and the Conway campus. And you can schedule an appointment and go in and receive tutoring and one-on-one -on -one assistance with your papers. This next section of the sheet goes over each of the categories of assignments. So here we have short writings, participation, peer mark workshops, discussion posts, major essays, exams, and quizzes. Please make sure you read through this information very carefully and if you have any questions for me, email me as soon as possible and let me know. This section is on attendance verification. What we have to do within the first week of class is verify that the students are present and are participating in the course. Because I don't meet with you in person, you will verify your attendance by taking the attendance verification quiz on D2L. This quiz is accessible through the calendar tool, and you can also access it through the week one section over here on the left side of the content section of, the, of D2L. All of the answers for this quiz are located in this document that we're looking at now. What I'm asking you to do is read through the document and then demonstrate your understanding of the course policies by taking this quiz. You do need to receive a 100% to verify your attendance and you also need to receive a 100% in order to unlock any other content on D2L. So until you take this quiz and get 100% you will not be able to turn in any assignments or open any of the information that you need in order to complete the coursework. So please make sure you get this done as soon as possible. This does have to be completed by September 21st. After the first week of class, I will take weekly attendance by the, grade that you, by the work that you complete on D2L. Attendance is also recorded on D2L, so make sure you check that regularly, just like I showed you in the attendance tool. Um, according to HGTC policy, there are no excused absences. If you miss two consecutive weeks of work in an online course, you will be withdrawn from the class. 
If you complete the weekly assignments, you will be marked present. So it's really important that you not just sign on to D2L, but that you actually do the work. Emailing me or just logging into the system does not satisfy the attendance requirement. You must complete the work in order to be counted present. All that said, if you have an extenuating circumstance that's preventing you from completing the coursework, for example, if you're hospitalized or facing an equally serious situation, please contact me as soon as possible. I would like to assist you in any way that I can, and we can discuss what's going on and how to proceed from there. This next section of the document discusses the Student Code of Conduct and Departmental Policies. It's very important for you to read over this information. There's information about online etiquette, and there's a link here to HGTC's policies on online etiquette. There is a section on conduct, and there's also a section on academic misconduct. The most common kind of academic misconduct in an English class is plagiarism. And even though I discuss this every semester, I still have at least one case of plagiarism in at least one class every semester. Please make sure that the work you complete is your own. You don't want to get in trouble with an assignment. There is a list of repercussions for academic misconduct, and the least severe is receiving a grade of zero on the assignment, an automatic zero that cannot be made up. And then there are also some more severe consequences, so please make sure you read through these policies and that you understand the consequences of plagiarism or any other kind of academic misconduct. There is a section on technology issues. I, I gave you some tips on troubleshooting different issues that you may encounter while you're trying to complete your online coursework. Um, I'm happy to help you and answer questions that you have, but I do ask that before you contact me, you try these tips first. So please try to so solve the problem on your own. And if you're still having an issue, go ahead and send me an email or give me a call and I'll do whatever I can to help you figure it out. Continuing on in content, if you go to the table of contents, you can see the rest of the content in the course. Under course information are two important documents. The first one is the instructional package. The instructional package is the document that is given to all students who are taking English 102, whether they're taking it in person or online. It includes important information about the course objectives, the rationale for the course, and then how the course might be broken down. So please make sure you read through this information. It talks about the different modules. It does vary by instructor, so you'll be able to see the way our course is set up by looking at the course calendar. Further down the page is information about services that we offer to students. There's information about attendance here. And then we also have a section on student resources. Uh, we have the Student Success and Tutoring Center that I mentioned before. We have WaveNet Central. This is your go-to location um, or resource for any technology issues that you might have. And we also have disability services. So please make sure you read over this information. And if anything is pertinent to you, you know where this information is located. Under course information, we also have the course calendar. If you click on this and open it up, you can see that each week is broken down into the different assignments and activities that you will participate in. Right now I have weeks one through five mapped out. This takes us up to exam one that you'll take during week five, and I will have the rest of the semester mapped out shortly. Under here is week one, and then you can see that each week I'll have the agenda posted at the top, along with any of the relevant assignments or materials that you need to complete those assignments. Right now, the only week that you will be able to see is week one, but once you click on and take this attendance verification quiz, you will be able to see weeks two, three, four, and five open up on the left-hand side. You won't be able to access any of those materials until the date that module begins. So for week two, you'll be able to access the material on September 26th. On week three, you'll be able to access the material on October 3rd, and so on and so forth. At the top of each week, I will post the weekly agenda. So let's go ahead and take a look at week one. All assignments are due by 11.59 p.m. unless otherwise noted, and the college deadline for adding or dropping a course is September 21st. This is why you need to take that attendance verification quiz by the 21st. 
go ahead and read the instructional package and instructor's information sheet that I was just going over. You're viewing the course introduction video right now. You'll take the attendance verification quiz by September 21st. And I would also like for you to spend this um, time during the first week reading all relevant course documents and getting familiar with D2L and course expectations. In terms of the actual coursework, you're going to read in the textbook. You'll read chapter one, chapter two, and chapter nine, as well as a short story called Everyday Use by Alice Walker. In addition, you're going to view Andrew Stanton's TED Talk, The Clues to a Great Story. Andrew Stanton is a professional storyteller. He's worked for Pixar for years and has been involved in creating movies such as Toy Story, um, Finding Nemo, and many other famous ones. And what he does in this TED Talk is discuss his experience as a storyteller, and he establishes his criteria for a great story. This is the TED Talk that we're going to use to discuss literature this first week, and it's also the TED Talk that will guide our first essay. Go ahead and read the Literary Elements handout. This is a condensed version of the terms and definitions you need to know this semester, so I would recommend printing it out and keeping it for reference. You will also read the guidelines and rubric for Paper 1, the Great Story Narrative Evaluation Essay. You have the first discussion to complete, and you also have the first quiz to take. The discussion is based on Stanton's TED Talk and the short story Everyday Use, and the quiz is based on the reading from the textbook. Underneath the agenda, you can access the attendance verification quiz. You can also open up the instructor information sheet, which is also available under overview, as well as the instructional package, which is also available under course information. And here you can access paper one narrative evaluation essay. This, these are the guidelines and the rubric for the first paper. This is the literary elements handout. This is where you can see Andrew Stanton's TED talk. From here you can participate in our first discussion. Once you read through the instructor information sheet, you will see that discussion posts um, are required and you need to post twice. The first one will be in response to the prompt that I give you, and the second post from you will be in response to a classmate. And then you'll also take the quiz, and you can see the quiz covers the following readings, chapters 1, 2, 9, and then the short story, Everyday Use. If you have any questions about this material or if you encounter any technology issues, Go ahead and do your troubleshooting and then contact me if you have any questions or concerns. If you scroll down on the left side of the page under content, you'll, you will see a bar that says resources. Under resources, I posted some helpful handouts and I've also posted helpful links and sites. If you open that section, you can see a link to our LibGuide, which we will use quite frequently during the research process. There's a link to the Or Georgetown Library, the Student Success and Tutoring Center, WaveNet Central, which is where you can get technology assistance. Grammarly is a great uh, program that you can use for grammar assistance. You can actually download this to your computer and it will check for grammatical issues. I've tested this out myself and it works really well. I highly recommend it. There's also Grammar Bytes, which is chompchomp.com. These are interactive grammar exercises that you can use if you know that there are certain grammar issues that you struggle with. There's a link to Purdue OWL, the online writing lab. This website has excellent resources that can help you with MLA format, that can help you with grammar issues. They also have sections that talk about specific types of writing. So this is just a really great um, resource to use to help you with writing. There's also links to Dropbox.com and Google Drive. Both of these are cloud storage. I use Dropbox.com. It is free. You can store any files within your Dropbox.com account, and as long as you have an internet or a computer and internet access, you can access any of your files. I highly recommend Dropbox.com or a Google Drive account if you tend to lose the small USB drives like I do. This concludes the first section of the course introduction video. Please go ahead and watch the second section of the course introduction video to learn more about your first major essay in the course.